Hi, Julia Watts here from Creative Expressions and today I'm going to share a few techniques using the Cosmic Shimmer Shimmer Shakers. Shimmer Shakers come in a, in a little pot like this and they've got a little applicator like a pepper pot applicator in here. Now they are different to pixie powders in that obviously this is Pixie powders are normally quite insipid. The colour that you see is very bland and then when you mist them with water you wake them up. But with these, the colour that you see there is the colour that you get. These don't split into lots of different colours like pixie powders do. These are true to the colour that you see in the pot. So if you want something that's pink or if you want something that's blue, you pick up that pot and you're going to get it. You're never too sure with your pixie powders. But all the techniques that you do with your pixie powders, you can do with the shimmer shakers. So if you're used to them, you're going to love these too. I'm going to give you a few kind of ideas of what you can do with them. So obviously the simplest way that you can use them, this is the raspberry rose, is to just pop some onto a piece of watercolour card or coconut white card, whatever colour card you want to, and mist them with some water. I'll just move things out of the way. <laughs> And that kind of weights them up and you can see the more water that you add the more that they're going to run obviously you can uh, add them to your die cuts whatever you want to or you can uh, die cut from this you can add another color in there if you want to so you can actually get a variance of color so I'm going to add some of the, the blue on top this is the teal ocean and you need, just need to remember that whenever there's some powder and there's no water covering it, then that's not actually going to set. So you need to give that a mist and obviously move it around if you want to. So we set that aside to dry and pop it down here. So that's the simplest way of using your shimmer shakers. Very, very pigmented. Another way that you can use them which is kind of variation on that same technique is with a stencil. This is the geometric circles from Lisa Horton. I'm going to pop one of those on a, a dry piece of watercolour card and we'll add a couple of different colours in there. Let's go for this is the warm copper. And you can mix the shimmer shakers in with uh, texture paste, change the colour if you want to. You can also, uh, if I had say clear texture paste uh, underneath here, I could then sprinkle on top and, and as the uh, texture paste dries, the colour will disperse within the texture paste. So that's another use that you can use them. Let's go for oh, decisions, decisions, what's going to go nicely with that. Let's go for this one, this is nice. This is the Dusky Mink. So we get, we're kind of on brown tones here. I mean, although they don't split, you can give them the effect of splitting by using more than one colour if you want to. Probably don't need to use as much as I do, but uh, I'm quite heavy handed. Then again, we mist with water. Now, if you mist an awful lot, then you are going to get some movement of the powder underneath the stencil. But remember, you do need to make sure you mist enough, otherwise you're not going to bind. But we've got um, ink or powder lying around on the surface here, so we can actually get a twofer. So we can take a print on the top, give it a press down, another piece of watercolour card. So you don't have to use watercolour card, it's just a little bit more absorbent. And we peel that away to see what our print looks like. So we've got a beautiful print there to work with. And then we move, remove the stencil and we've got our powdered background that we can work with. So like I say, we've got a twofer there. And I've just popped my stencil into some water to dry off. And as this dries, you'll see some shimmer coming out from the mica that's in there. And it will settle down into a very beautiful background. To one side, clear up again. Obviously any excess that you've got lying around the surface surface of, your, of your, your work you can actually pick up onto your journal or a scrap piece of card if you want to. Now what I find very exciting about shimmer shakers is actually stamping with them. Something I absolutely love to do. So we're going to, let's create, let's not waste. 
let's create a palette uh, on a piece of watercolour card so then we can mist it afterwards and we've not wasted any of the powder. Now to stamp with it, uh, what we want to do is we want to add some of the shimmer shaker to, this is watercolour card again, to create a palette. And what I'm going to do is pick up one colour at a time. I'm going to do two colours, but I'm going to pick up one colour at a time. And I've got Francoise Reed's Feathers stamp here from her vintage collection. And I'm just going to rub it into the powder. And you see the powder's picking up onto the stamp. You do not need to put any perfect medium on it. It's picking up onto the stamp perfectly as, as it is. And then I'm also going to add another colour. Where's that teal? There's a lovely teal. Let's go for the teal colour. And add some of that. Purple and teal look lovely together. And we're going to try and pick it up. It's harder with a big stamp. It's easier with a smaller stamp. And it's easier if you put it on a block. But I've not got a block with me at the moment. So I've got, only got my stamp press. So we try and get some into the areas. Again, it doesn't matter if we miss an area because it's a grungy stamp. you find me using these an awful lot because they're so forgiving. I think we're good there. See, we've got powder everywhere. And now I'm going to try and carefully put it onto my block without disturbing any of it. Right. Let's miss this. Let's see what we've got here first. We've got some lovely colour going on here. See, that would normally be on copy paper and be wasted, but that's going to be great for a start of a background or to die cut. You'll find yourself mopping up and up an awful lot and putting your sleeves in it as well. I've got a red sleeve now. Oh well. <laughs> it's water-based. It'll come out. Right, let's get some card going. Now, the important thing to, to remember when you're using it is you need water to activate it, just like we have done when we've made our backgrounds. And it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes your second or third image are better than your first image, but it's still going to look fabulous. So we give it a mist with water, and then we're going to stamp. There's no kind of... You don't, you don't have to be quick with it at all, it's not going to dry, it's not going to ruin your stamp. It might stain your stamp, but that's just the, the dye in the, in the, in the, in the um, powder. There's our first image. Bit on the wonk, but there's our first one. Because the, the mica, you can actually do it on black card. So we go again, and we can do it on black card, see what it looks like on there. This might be better or worse than the last one. You may or may not see it that well, depending on the colours that I've chosen, but we'll see how we go. I'll give that a wiggle. That's rather nice, I quite like that. It's the mica that means that you can see it on black card. I think I've got I'm a bit missing there, but I think that's, uh, that's me not putting the powder on there. So we go again. I've had up to 12 impressions from one application of shimmer shakers and they're all they're all usable remember that some of them might not be able to be used as a foreground see that's a li little bit more water on that one but it's still very usable and some some of them can be used as a you know for die cutting uh, or the start of a background rather than being the, the focal image. We stop. We just stop at this one. We do four on this one. I think I'm on the wonk again. See, that's still usable. So you've still got a fair amount of ink uh, powder left on there that you can use. So from we've just had four very usable images there from that one application. Like I say, with flowers and things, I've added up to 12 on the one image. One other thing that you can do with shimmer shakers is actually paint with them. So I've got a couple of 
images here stamped. This is the vintage iris from Francoise Reed in the woodware collection. And to paint with them, all you need to do is pop, let's have, we won't have a fluorescent pink one. Let's have, oh, Julia, make your mind up. Let's have this one. This is the Purple Paradise. Pop some into a well. And we're going to pop a little bit of water in as well. Probably put too much in you, watch. Far too much. So what we're going to do is just pop in another, no problem, pop some in another well. And just add a little bit of water from here. There we go. So this is now becoming a watercolour paint. And the same rules apply in that the more watery it is, the pale it's going to be. So I'm trying to get some more powder out here. We go. The more watery it's going to be, the thick, the more powder in, the darker it's going to be. You can mix your colours. So if we wanted to, we could go for. There's one called um, it's a snow one. Sorry, there we go. No, that's gun metal. I'll find it in a minute. Or not. Tell you what, let's put some of this one in to make it lighter. We'll have some of this paler purple. This is the um, which one's this? Heather Meadow, this one. So that's made it a lighter purple. So mix them together, make your own unique colours. And once they're set down, you can regenerate them. And now we can paint on top. This, is an, this has been embossed, so it's, it's jumping off the embossed area. So, shimmer shakers have the same properties as pixie powders in that they will show up on black card and on white card. The difference being that shimmer shakers stay true to their colour, whereas pixie powders have interference in them. So shimmer shakers remain true to their colour on black card because there is no interference in shimmer shakers whereas there is in pixie powders. So we can see in here if I wiggle that we've got that lovely purpley colour that I've set up and here we've got the same colour coming out in the white. So that's another thing that you can do with shimmer shakers. So hopefully that's given you some ideas. I mean here, that one stamped in the background. I've mopped up excess ink here and I've also used it on die cuts in the background too. So lots of ideas. There's easily 30 techniques that you can do with this product. It's a great product. Hope you've been inspired. Thanks very much. Bye.